today on the Orthodox Ethos Podcast, The House Church, Divine Liturgy, and Us. During this whole crisis, we've been hearing from different quarters as a way of consolation for the faithful who are unable to go to the services and to the church at the commune, that we're going to make our house into a church. We're going to have a house church. And there's been even encouragement, especially here in Greece, with stories from the Eurodicon, the Saints of the Fathers, the life of St. Mary of Egypt, uh, that don't worry, you're not going to commune for a long time, neither did St. Mary of Egypt, or don't worry, we have in our house, we're going to make our house into a church. And of course, that's all well intended, but there's a danger here that's hiding in uh, in this whole encouragement without a lot of discernment. We have to be really clear what we mean by the house church. Uh, this is, of course, mentioned in Holy Scripture. If we go back to the church in Corinth uh, with Priscilla or the church in Rome with the Apostle Paul, there's mention of the church in the house of Priscilla. Uh, what does that mean, though, in practice? You remember, now, this is a time when there were no churches built. Uh, the church existed essentially underground. It was persecuted by the state, uh, the Romans at the time, the pagan Romans. And um, they were forced to find places, houses, in order to do the divine liturgy. Now, they would go out and preach, they would witness, but for the divine liturgy, they needed to have a private place because only the initiated would be allowed. And so in the houses of the faithful, and usually large houses, wealthy Christians would house everyone. And Paul would talk about greeting the people in the house, uh, church of Priscilla, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and so the key here, though, is that the, ch- the house became a church because divine liturgy was celebrated there. Not because people were gathered for prayer alone, but because the divine liturgy, which makes the church and the church is made and we're initiated into the church through the mysteries of baptism, chrismation, and holy communion. All three mysteries initiate us into the church, make us members of the body of Christ. And so the divine liturgy is a uh, the, the heart of our identity, and that's when the house becomes a church in the, in the true sense of the word. So a serious Orthodox theologian would not speak without great clarification of the houses becoming churches, uh, lest they give the impression to those who are uninitiated or not very well knowledgeable about scripture and church history, uh, and the many Christians in Greece who are not catechized, that it's okay to stay home for church. Uh, In addition to that impression, now we have the church saying, stay home and watch divine liturgy at home. This is contrary to the very living tradition and experience of the church, though, to watch divine liturgy from home. We'll talk about whether that's even blessed and something that should be, we should be watching. But it's much better for the church, instead of encouraging and trying to console faithful in this way, the message should be, and should have been, and should be now, repent. Repent and find uh, ourselves, go back to what obviously we've lost, because a part of the reason why the churches are closed, we're not in them, is because of our sins, because of our falling away, because of our communion without the presuppositions, because of our worldliness and going without the fear of God and faith and love to the holy mysteries. Now, not all of us, perhaps, but many Orthodox Christians, especially in places like Greece, where many go without proper preparation and uh, catechism. Uh, it, it is truly ironic that in a state where we're not with one another, we're not embracing one another, we're not venerating the icons, we're not communing, 
We're talking about a house church. Do you know what it means to be separated from all of that? It's hell. That's what hell is. Hell is not to be in communion. And communion is when we're together in the synaxis, in the gathering of the faithful, when we're communion of the mysteries, when we're embracing one another in love, when we're, we're kissing the images, the icons who, who of the saints and of our Lord and of the mother of God who are real and perhaps more real than this world. They're in heaven with God. And so the, the holy, that holy embrace, whether it be with those of our brothers who are in this world and the struggling Christians, or whether it be those who are in the triumphant church, that embrace is heaven. That's what it'll be like in heaven. We'll be together around the one altar, communing of the same cup. So now that we're separated from that, it is a great danger to talk about the home church. We should be saying to all the faithful, watch and pray and repent. Watch and pray. Instead of Watch television. Watch on the television the Holy Mysteries. Sure, it's a certain consolation to watch the divine services. Sure, there's there's a connection there. But it is a far, far cry from what the church is really all about and what we experience. And of course, we know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But there should be a, 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 a warning. Do not relax at home. Do not sit in front of the television uh, do not think that from the television you can have your spiritual life sent to you and you can participate. Let's not forget that it's going to be through that means, the media, television, internet, that the Antichrist is and will continue in the last days to gain the devotion and the following of millions and millions of people. It is through those means that we will see the assassination of the prophets Elias and Enoch when they preach repentance to the people in Jerusalem. And so that means is going to be uh, not a, a, a path of our communion with God. And we should not become uh, complacent and accept that this is a possibility. This is a extreme anomaly that should be we should be repenting of this situation and quickly bring about its end so uh th th what should we do you do, fine father this is okay i agree what do we do well for first of all for divine services of vespers and matins one could participate as much as possible through prayer for the divine liturgy it's not possible we should at least, at least at the doors, the doors, shut the television off. But I would say after the gospel, where it says depart catechumens, we should shut the television off. And along with the ancient tradition of the church, that should be going on in every church anyway. That's the tradition of the church. And in, in, a, in a missionary setting like the Western world today, where Orthodoxy is a missionary church, we should be reinstituting the departure of the catechumens, the non-initiated, the visitors, uh, and even those who are not going to commune. It would be very didactic and helpful for that to be initiated, to, to be reinstituted for those who will commune to be those who remain for the second part of the at least for the catechumens and the non-orthodox to depart. And you'll say, well, this is very rude and this is very, uh, but no, it can be done in a beautiful way. It can be done showing the greatest respect for the catechumens and the visitors, if they depart at that point in the divine liturgy, they can be catechized by someone who's assigned to that. And the visitors can be shown great respect until the divine liturgy ends. It's all possible. It's not impossible, but it has to, we have to be serious about our own orthodox way of doing things and return to the, to the, to the roots our own roots. We've gotten away from them because we've been in Orthodox countries that have been all Orthodox for hundreds and thousands of years. Well, we're not that anymore. We are definitely in a missionary setting. And it is a great service to the catechumens when they are not served everything up front, but on the day of their baptism, they are initiated into the mystery of the divine Eucharist. You see, the, de the devil is working hard to do away with the mystery. There'd be no more mystery. There'd be no more uh, initiation, that everything be out there on television and there'd be everything be profaned. 
that people can sit in front of the television and, and look at the divine liturgy and do sinful things or do things that are not at all bringing them into communion with God or even contrary. So th- this is a very problematic situation that we're in. We should not be happy or complacent or encouraging the faithful that this is a solution spiritually. It would be much better if they turn the television off, especially, as I said, from the catechumens on or from the doors, the doors at the very least. And it took in their hands the prayer rope, and and with deep repentance, we all called upon God's mercy. Uh, the tradition of the church, until very recently, and even in Russia, where <clears throat> uh, they, now they show divine liturgy on television. Well, up until recently, at least into the um, not eighties and nineties, that was not the case. It would be unheard of for. Uh, the, the divine liturgy to be shown on television. <clears throat> and certainly, even on Mount Athos, where the tradition is kept, those who are not Orthodox, and many of the monasteries are asked to leave at that time. That is a key, a key aspect of the divine liturgy is its mis- mysterious aspect is it's, 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 um, that it's an initiation for the faithful who will commune. If we see that, if we go back in the church history, we see an, a, a confirmation of this in the famous text of the pilgrim uh, uh, Erethira or Ergiria, who came from Spain in the 380s and went to Jerusalem and Constantinople, and she she describes her whole pilgrimage quite in detail. What does she not describe? Any of the divine liturgy. No description whatsoever. It simply says, as it is uh, known and, and, and ordered to be taken and to be to carried out. There's no description whatsoever. So it was clearly understood in the fourth century that the uninitiated do not, uh, are not exposed to that deep mystery of the church. That distinction between the kirigma, that which we preach, and the, the esoteriki, the internal life of the church, is, is, is really been lost today because of these means. And we've, we've, we've not been disciplined to keep that door, that, that curtain, uh, before, before the holy mysteries. We even have, in, uh, in many places, cameras in the holy altar. It's unbelievable. It's un, uh, uh, unconscionable for us to, to have cameras in the holy altar. There's a reason why there's a, a icon screen. There's a reason why there's a curtain. There's a reason why in the ancient church, there would be a curtain around the actual altar itself, and the holy bishop would go in without even others in the altar seeing uh, in, in some in some wit- witnesses give us that uh, picture of the ancient church's um, devotion to the mystery. So we, uh, on the one hand, respecting the mystery; on the other hand, um, avoiding all kinds of dis- impiety, uh, understanding the, the the enemies. Intention to make everything profane and to be no mystery left. All of this leads us to uh, keeping in mind the end game. The end game being that he, the, the enemy wants to do away with uh, the divine humanity of the church and of Christ uh, and wants to make it common, wants to make the church as if one religion is of many, uh, wants to make everything on a human level to be something not mysterious. What's the what the the uh, the, the, the present war against the Holy Communion in church in, in Greece right now? Many saying that you can get sick from the Holy Communion. What is that? But a, not, a part of the mystery of iniquity, the war against the divine humanity, the, the, the divinity of Christ Himself. Another example. So we having all that in mind, having in mind especially where this is leading, we have to be much more careful about when we talk about the whole house church, the home church. We're not Protestants. We don't believe that you can gather in the church, in your home, and simply have prayer. And that is the church. The church is not uh, present unless the divine liturgy is served and we commune of the holy mysteries. And unless that's happening in houses, that's very possible that will be the case going forward if we enter a time of persecution, then we don't have a house church. We're not talking about the church in the home. We're talking about individual Christians praying and making it. Yes, we talk about the home church, but not as in that light. We talk about it making the house, the home, into a monastery, a church, a place of prayer. And that's what we mean by that. We do not mean 
and the divine liturgy is taking place there, and it can be no substitute for that as Orthodox Christians. So we pay attention to the signs of the times, pay attention to um, what's happening around us, be on guard, be watchful and prayerful, and repent continually. This is the job uh, of every Christian, especially during these difficult times. Um, we know the Alpha and the Omega. We know how history ends. Let's be on guard that we not be a part of the machinations and the mystery of iniquity, which wants to make everything profane and everything common. Keep that mystery. Turn off the television at the time of the, the, the second half of the divine energy at the very least, and be on guard spiritually for the mystery. Keep the mystery, even in spite of all the means at our disposal. Let's keep the mystery. We'll talk about more about the attack on the mystery, the struggle against uh, here in Greece, uh, which the church, when the churches are open, we're going to be facing uh, new temptations. We'll talk about that in our next episode. I hope you'll join us. Christ is risen. <laughs> Oh,